lighting good. Hi, we're here today with another one of our conversations from the Capitol, today being joined by Representative Tracy Burnett. Um, she sponsored some exciting legislative um, legislation this past session, including HB 1362, which aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, from the building sector. And we know that changes like high, high efficiency heating equipment, um, solar codes, green building codes can help both um, reduce overall energy use, save consumers money, and improve air quality. So really excited to have you here today. Welcome, Representative Burnett. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this is the fun thing to talk about. <laughs> it is a fun thing to talk about. And before we dive into um, energy codes and buildings, I'd love to just get to know you a little bit and understand um, what motivated you to run for office in the first place. Well, I, you know, I'm, uh, Okay, I'll talk about the environmental reasons. My son nearly died of an asthma attack when he was a toddler. And the wildfires that were climate induced caused him to go to the ER multiple times. Uh, he's now 22 years old, but you know, uh, I'd say at least eight times he had to go to the ER because of, of uh, asthma related. We have an ozone air quality issue here too. Um, okay. but. Other climate things, My a uh, friend of mine nearly died in the floods that hit Boulder County in 2013. The St. Frain River jumped its banks and carved a new path right through her house, nearly killing her. Okay. And, uh, and also uh, I was involved in the, um, I was gonna run the uh, New York City Marathon in 2012 and instead uh, Hurricane Sandy hit and I ended up doing relief effort back there. So. Uh, and, and and the finally, you know, uh, my district involves the uh, Marshall Fire, and so this was like the third time in my life that I've I've been dealing with relief efforts related to climate, climate the climate crisis. So yeah, those are the reasons I some of the reasons I ran for office. Yeah, yeah, that's great, and thanks for for sharing that. I mean, those are difficult personal, you know, difficult things to go through, but it's always. Um, interested to hear the personal motivations, you know, behind, um, behind the work. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah, I think people now realize, especially with Marshall Fire, everyone is affected by the climate crisis. And no one is, no one is, is I wouldn't say safe, but no, everybody's impacted. It really scared a lot of people that it, that this could happen right here in suburban, you know, a suburban area of our, of our state. Yeah, I definitely. And I think that it's something, especially here in Colorado, we're all becoming very acutely aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and so this piece of legislation you sponsored, um, HB 1362, reducing um, greenhouse gas emissions from the building sector. Um, you know, we know why air quality, um, kind of the big picture is important here. Why was uh, tackling this sector of emissions important for you this past session? Well, actually, before I ran for office, I mean, well, I should say, while I was running for office, I was already investigating what kind of things I would be interested in doing. And I'm an engineer by background. I have an MBA oh, cool. as well. And um, and to me, in, in learning more about the, the, the energy, the, the crisis we have, the climate crisis, I realized that buildings are not only one of the largest um, air, um, producers of greenhouse gas emissions, it, you know, it depends on how you cut the data, but it'd be right. 30 to 50% of total worldwide greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, I also know it'd be the longest to decarbonize, the hardest nut to crack. Uh, and, you know, I figured with, with my engineering background, um, I'm a structural engineer by background. I actually used to, you know, study concrete, you know, and design buildings. Yeah. That buildings to me, it was a natural thing to take on something really technical and hard. And uh, as a new legislator, I thought, this is what I'm going to do. Keep working on decarbonizing buildings. So awesome. I'm not going to take on hard things. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's great. And it's, I mean, especially important because as we know, buildings are built to be around for a very long time. So the decisions we make now are really have a big impact for many years in our future beyond a lot of, you know, a lot of other policy decisions. So this was a really important thing to tackle. Um, was there, I know the building, the bill itself covers a few different aspects of energy codes, um, high efficiency heating appliances. It touches on some solar technology, green codes, low carbon um, mm -hmm. programs. Is there one aspect of the bill that was really important to for you to see included or one part that you were like, this is, 
this is the thing for green building oh. codes or was it more just like the whole this is the right package that's going to, and all the pieces are what helps it stand up. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh boy, that's a question. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm laughing because there are many parts that I, I liked. I'd say, you know, number one, uh, I, I, I look at uh, electric vehicle ready, heat pump ready. This is mm -hmm. so important because it's going to take so long for us to decarbonize buildings. And so the sooner that we can, can uh, get this, uh, get these, um, these things and avoid uh, having people to retrofit and tear out walls. To me, that was so important. You know, EVs are coming very quickly. You know, yeah. in 10 years, it's going to be hard to not to, to, to buy a gas powered vehicle. And I think this is especially important for um, multifamily mm -hmm. buildings. You know, we need to make sure that everybody's brought along on this path to the sustainable creature. That's kind of core to my being. Right. Um, so that's one thing. Um, I, you know, I, I, I made sure that we put in the voluntary green code. Because I think mm -hmm. I, uh, I know that there's there's communities in my in my district that are interested in doing this and they need help doing it. And I think by showing the way, it real it's another way of fostering um, decar you know decarbonizing our you know our entire um, you know way of life. Um, two yeah. other things that are really important to me, um, and this has to do with um, I call it like just transition. Mm -hmm. It's neighborhood clean heat. To me, this is a way forward for people who are uh, in currently in, um, in in the gas industry to have a path forward with good jobs and for gas utilities to have a path forward mm -hmm. in the, uh, of, of redoing their whole business model to do green, green heat. So the grants that we have for neighborhood clean heat was important. And then right. finally, for me, it's uh, helping with the training. Uh, both uh, for contractors and also for uh, helping uh, local communities mm -hmm. uh, with these with these with grants uh, to help them, you know. So there isn't anything specific. Obviously, the big big thing is by 2030, you know, new buildings will be very low energy and very low carbon. That mm -hmm. you know, that's the big thing. So sorry, I couldn't answer it in like one question. <laughs> No, that's okay. Um, those were all really interesting and great points. You know, we know how important it is to avoid expensive retrofits um, in the future. And also, I think having the money for outreach and training to building owners to help everyone, like you said, owners and the community transition to a new system and new way of doing things is really important. Yeah. Um, and so I know this building is, uh, this bill is really exciting because it's a really big um, step forward for energy codes and buildings. But, you know, as we continue to move forward on the issue, what do you see as the future for policy around this? Or what would you see as next steps that you, that you would like to see happen around energy codes? Oh my God. Well, maybe not, it, it's, it's even bigger than that. I mean, to me, I think one of the things that I learned that I've been talking a lot about is indoor air quality. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, the health impacts of the nitrogen dioxides or even finding benzene in, in the gas that's used to heat our home, to heat our water, to heat our, our, our you know, our food. Yeah. And so indoor air quality, I, I kind of look at it as, um, it, it, it's burning gas in our homes is gonna be the equivalent of lead paint in buildings. The more people realize about it, kids kids that live in in homes with um, with gas appliances have a forty two percent increased risk of asthma, of developing asthma, not only exacerbating it but actually developing asthma. Right. So you know, of course, this is really near and dear to my heart because of my son. Um, so you know, so what do I see going forward? Um, you know, the nut, the next, the really hard nut to crack, retrofitting existing buildings for clean heat. And I'm having discussions in uh, with um, contractors and with um, local communities about how can we do this? How can we foster that? Another area is, is, um, is, is resilience, more resilience, fire codes, things like that. Obviously I care about embodied carbon mm -hmm. and uh, that's part of the voluntary green code. There are definitely, I, I ran an embodied carbon bill last year that, that, that was, um, that, you know, got over the finish line, uh, HB 1303. And that's getting worldwide attention now. That's awesome. And, uh, and, and so paving the way and doing more to, um, to reduce the uh, embodied carbon in buildings uh, and, and also actually sequestering carbon. Many, many, so I have a whole bunch of ideas. 
<laughs> long to-do list. Well, that's really exciting. And, um, you know, the PERG also recently released a report on gas stoves and indoor air pollution. So it's something on our radar as well. And we do, um, yeah, expect it to continue to get traction in the public eye. And I thought that was a great analogy to lead paint, um, you know, something that at one point is everywhere. And now we can't believe we let that happen. Exactly, exactly. So, a lot of exciting work ahead. Thanks so much for joining us today. Really uh, appreciate your insight and leadership on these issues and have a great rest of your day. Well, thank you. And uh, looking forward to partnering you with you in the future. Agreed. Take care. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.